Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 6, part of this playlist that I'm calling Discriminant Analysis. Now, Discriminant Analysis is just a multivariate technique concerned with separating distinct objects or observations. Now, a graphical illustration of this would be this. So we have two populations, red and blue. And if we were to plot them, they sort of look like these ellipsi. And note that if we take these ellipsi and, and shove them down to the first component, there's a lot of overlap between the two populations, right? And the difference of these means is, you know, whatever it is. If we were to shove these to the left, to the second component, there's also a lot of overlap. And look at the difference of these means at some value. But is there any other direction that we could kind of shove these into or compress them that would maximize that difference between the population means? And the answer is yes. And that's what linear discriminant uh, does. It, it finds the direction to shove these to maximize that standardized mean difference between the two populations. And if you notice, see this red line, we, the techniques that we're going to look at it finds that black arrow, the linear discriminant function, and then that, and, and it's called A, that becomes our new x-axis, right? So if we multiply it by a positive number, it grows this way. If we multiply it by a negative number, it grows this way. That's how it becomes a new x-axis. But if we were to shove them down onto these, notice the, the mean vector would be, you know, this difference, and it's actually maximum. That's what this linear discriminant function does. Okay, so let's look at some, now, you know, some examples, and we have to describe it, you know, statistically first. So assume we have two populations; they have the same covariance sigma, but they have distinct mean vectors mu one and mu two. We take observations from each population; they can be different sample sizes n one and n two, but each observation consists of it's a vector of p variables. Now, the linear discriminant function that we described above, you know, to create that new x-axis, it's a linear combination of the p, value, the p variables. So it's A transpose Y. So A is some transpose. Now, we have to find out what that transformation is that, that, that achieves what we want, but that's it. So we take this transformation for, for, uh, to all the observations in population one, and, and then we get a new z value, right? So we take these p variables and make it one value, z1. And that's what, that's the equivalent of shoving it down into that new, you know, x-axis. And then we do the same thing for population two. Now the a that we want is the a that maximizes the stand, the squared standardized difference between the two population means. It, you know, we want this to be big as possible. And if we were to back populate what Z and the standard uh, deviation associated with Z is, it would be this. Now the A that we're looking for is this. It's the inverse of the pooled covariance, sample pooled covariance matrix times the difference of the mean vectors. That's it. That's the A that creates the new x-axis, okay? So let's look at an example, a, a specific example. So we have samples from still produced at two different rolling temperatures, and they're compared. And so this is from Kramer and Jensen, 1969. The variables are yield point and ultimate strength. And we have two temperatures and two variables for each temperature. Notice the sample sizes are different. And we have, it's a vector of length 2 for each observation. So the 33 and 60 is one observation, etc. Now we can calculate sample statistics, the sample mean vectors for each. We can calculate the pooled uh, you know, sample covariance matrix. And then we calculate A, which is the inverse of, of the pooled covariance matrix times the difference of the mean vectors. And we come up with this. So this is it. A is the linear discriminant function that we need that maximizes that difference between the two standardized mean vectors. 
So the, the values of the projected points are found by calculating Z for each observation in the two groups. So I'm going to, okay, I can see here. So, so 41 and 59 are, is an observation from temperature 2. And to transform it, we take 41 and put it in for Y and 59 and put it in for Y2. And then that gets us a Z value. So that's the new observation for this this observation. So then we have 43 and 65, and we put those in here, and we get a Z value you know, using this transformation. And we do that for each observation. So we've taken a vector and made it, you know, into one value. So where there were two variables, now there's one. It's a Z value. And that's it. So the Z maximizes that difference between the two populations. Now let's do an R illustration where we can do some uh, tests. So we load the data. It's from the FTP site and it's uh, called T81 still data. We read it into Y. There's no header so we give it names, temp, yield, and strength. We plot it we print the first six observations with the head function. Now let's do t-test to see if yield, the mean yield is different between the two temperatures. Remember yield is the first variable there. And if we look at the t-test, the p-value is 0.14. So there's not enough evidence to say that yield is different between the two temperatures. If we do a t-test on strength by temperature, p-value is 0.15, so there's not enough evidence to say that the mean strength is different between the two temperatures, right? But when we calculate this linear discriminant function, which is, you know, we have sample size n1 and n2, mean vectors, sample covariance makes, we need those to calculate the sample pooled estimate of the covariance. We calculate A, the inverse of SP times the difference of these mean vectors. A, that's our new, that's our linear discriminant function. So if we transform each data point with A, we get Z. Now let's do a t-test of Z between the two temperatures, which is stored in column one of Y. And, and the t-test is, is 0 0.001102. That's highly significant, right? So this transformed variable is highly significant between the two temperatures. Okay, so let's look at a graphical illustration of what's going on. We're not going to review the R, the R code for this graph, but I will copy and paste it into the uh, comments section. So this is what we have. So the, the black dots above this red line are temperature one, and the red dots below the, this red line are temperature two. And notice that it sure does seem like they're, they're separated. You know, the temp one is above and temp two is below. But when we shove these into the just one variable, yield, and then do a t-test, you know, there's so much overlap, the means are not different. Or if we take them and, and shove them to strength and do a t-test, there's so much overlap, they're not different. But when we calculate the linear discriminant function, which is this vector here. That's our new x-axis. So if we take these and shove them down onto this vector, that's going to maximize the mean difference between these two populations. And that's it. That's the linear discriminant function. Now this red line is called a classification rule. And that's actually the next chapter on how to calculate that line that best separates the two populations. Okay, so if we were to use the built-in function for R, well, it's sort of built-in. It's in the library called MASS. It's called LDA, Linear Discriminant Analysis. And we want temperature, the two temperatures, to be a function of yield and strength. And we store it in fit, and we get this, these results. We have prior probabilities which deal with the sample size, or you can set them if you're doing more of a Bayesian type analysis. But it pops out the, the group means, vectors, 
and it pops out this linear discriminant right here. This is it. This is the new x-axis after our transformation. So this is called scaling. So from fit, we grab the scaling component, which are these two vectors, and store it to A2. Remember, we calculated A above as our, and so this is sort of a second approach in calculating it. Um, A and A2 are actually different, but if we look at the division of the two, it's a constant multiple, they're constant multiples of each other. So remember, they're both vectors. And if we multiply a vector by a positive number, it tends to grow you know, in one direction. But if we multiply it times a negative, it flips and then grows in the opposite direction. So these two vectors are, it's the same line, just pointing in different directions. So it, it actually is the same. So we transform our data, in, you know, yield and a strength by A2 to come up with a new Z. And then we do a t-test on it, and it's highly significant. It's the same p-value as before, as it should be. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. We're at 11 minutes, and the next video also deals with uh, discriminant analysis. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.